Today we're going to be talking about how to find the surface area of revolution of the parametric curve. And in this particular problem, we've been given the parametric curve defined by the equations x equals 3t squared and y equals 2t cubed. We've been told to find the surface area of revolution on the interval t greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 5 when we're rotating about the y-axis. So because our axis of rotation is the y-axis, that means that our formula for surface area of revolution has to reflect that. So we say S sub y to denote the surface area rotated around the y-axis is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of 2 pi x times this square root here. Now, there's a couple important things to note about this formula. First, that it's in terms of t, so our limits of integration a and b are going to be in terms of t, and we're going to pull those directly from the interval we've been given, 0 and 5 here. 0 equals a and 5 equals b. Also, we have this value here for x, which is the only variable in our integral that's not t. Well, we're going to pull this x directly from the equation we've been given for x, which is 3t squared, so we're going to be plugging in there. If we were rotating around the x-axis, this formula would be exactly the same, except that instead of x here, we'd have y, and we'd be plugging in 2t cubed instead of 3t squared. But because we're rotating around the y-axis, that means we have a value here for x, and we'll be pulling it from our equation for x. So that's going to be just an easy plug and chug, but you can see here that before we start working with this formula, we're going to need derivatives, f prime of t and g prime of t. And this is usually how you see the formula written. It's important to note that you can take f of t and g of t to be either one, x or y. So you can say that f of t is equal to x, or that f of t is equal to y, and that g of t is equal to x or to y. You just have to make one correspond to x and the other correspond to y. I usually just like to form the habit of saying that f of t will be equal to x and g of t will be equal to y. So I'll go ahead and redefine these here as f of t is equal to x, which is 3t squared, and that g of t is equal to y, which is 2t cubed. Now we want to find the derivatives for both of these, so we'll say that f prime of t is going to be equal to, and this is just power rule, right, bring the 2 down, we get 6t, that g prime of t, again with power rule, will be 6t squared. Now we can easily plug those two in. So let's go ahead and start working with our integral. We'll have the integral from a to b, which we already know is 0 to 5. So 0 to 5 of 2 pi times x, which has been defined for us as 3t squared. So we'll plug that in. And now we have the square root of f prime of t squared. So 6t squared here, we're going to say 6t squared plus g prime of t squared. So we'll have 6t squared and square that dt. And this is going to be our integral. So now it's just a matter of your skills with integrals to simplify this thing. So the first thing we can do, we can pull out the 2 pi and the 3. Those are constant coefficients. So we'll pull out 6 pi and we'll have the integral from 0 to 5 of t squared. Now inside the integral here, we can multiply this out. 6t squared is going to give us 36t squared. And 6t squared squared again is going to give us 36t to the fourth, all underneath the square root sign here. Now with the square root here, we can go ahead and factor out a 36t squared. And when we do that, when we factor out 36 t squared, that'll be multiplied by 1 plus t squared dt here. We can pull the 36 t squared outside of the square root. The 36 will just become a 6, so we'll move this out here as a 6, and the t squared will just become a t when we take the square root of that. We'll pull the 6 way out in front of the integral to combine with this 6 pi, and we'll get 36 pi out in front times the integral from 0 to 5 of t cubed now, these two multiplied together, times the square root of t squared plus 1, which is all we have left here inside our integral. Now at this point, we can go ahead and try u substitution. This might look like a trigonometric substitution problem, but it actually works out with u substitution as well. So we'll just go ahead and set u equal to 
t squared plus 1. We'll take the derivative of that du and we'll get 2t dt. And then we want to solve for dt by dividing both sides by 2t. So we'll see that dt is equal to du over 2t. When we plug these values back in to our integral as substitutions, we'll get 36 pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of t cubed times the square root of u times du over 2t. Now you'll notice we'll get this t in the denominator to cancel, and this will become a t squared in the numerator. We'll pull the 1 half out in front, and that'll reduce our constant coefficient to 18 pi. So what we're left with is 18 pi times the integral from 0 to 5 of t squared times the square root of u du. Now t squared we still need to get rid of, but we can solve our equation for u in terms of t squared and make a substitution. So to solve for t squared we just subtract 1 from both sides and we see that t squared is equal to u minus 1. Now we can go ahead and plug that into our integral and that will allow us to simplify further. So we'll get u minus 1 times the square root of u du. Now we can multiply this out. So what, we're, what we'll be left with is 18 pi times the integral from 0 to 5. u times the square root of u, or u times u to the 1 half, is u to the 3 halves power. And then of course we have minus 1 times the square root of u, or 1 times u to the 1 half, so we just get minus u to the 1 half du. And now it's just simple power rule to take the integral. When we do, we'll get s sub y equals 18 pi times, we'll add 1 to the exponent to get 5 halves, and then we'll divide by the new exponent, and we'll get 2 fifths out in front, so 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus, same thing here, add 1 to the exponent to get 3 halves, divide by that new exponent, we'll get 2 thirds, the reciprocal out in front, so 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, and then we're going to evaluate that on the range 0 to 5. But before we do, of course, we have to make a back substitution for u. We know that u is equal to t squared plus 1, so we'll go ahead and plug that in for u. Now we can evaluate on our limits of integration. Remember that we always plug in the upper limit first, which is 5, and then subtract whatever we get when we plug in the lower limit. So in this case, 18 pi. When we plug in 5, what we'll get here is 5 squared, which is 25, plus 1, which is 26. So we'll get 26 to the 5 halves. Keep in mind that 26 to the 5 halves, this is the same thing as 26 to the 1 half, then raised to the fifth power, because 1 half times 5 is 5 halves, multiplication of exponents there. So 26 to the 1 half is the square root of 26, but raised to the fifth power. Then we'll subtract 2 thirds times 26 to the 3 halves power, which is the same as the square root of 26, but raised to the third power. We've plugged in 5 everywhere, now we want to subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0. So we'll say minus 2 fifths here times 0 plus 1 just gives us 1. 1 raised to the 5 halves is still 1, so this is just 2 fifths. Then we say minus 2 thirds times 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 raised to the 3 halves is still 1, so we just end up with 2 thirds there. Now we'll go ahead and simplify by factoring out a 2. Notice we have 2 in the numerator of each of our fractions here, so we'll factor out the 2. And then we'll find a common denominator of 15. Now to simplify further, we'll do a couple of things. We'll simplify our constant coefficient by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, so we get 12 pi over 5 in front. Inside our brackets here, we'll combine the negative 3 and the 5. That'll become positive 2 here, plus 2. And we'll go ahead and simplify the square roots we have here. So what we see is that we have 
3. Now, square root of 26 raised to the fifth power is the same thing as square root of 26 times square root of 26 times square root of 26, etc. Well, if you multiply square root of 26 times square root of 26, you've used two of them and you just have 26, right? If you use two more, you have another 26. Well, this is raised to the five. So here we've used two and then four and then we have one more. So we have square root of 26 there. Same thing here, we have minus five. We've got three of them. If we use up two of them, we have 26 there, and then we just have one left, square root of 26 there. Then we've got our plus two. Now to simplify this further, we can factor out a two at least from everything. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll get 24 pi over five when we bring a two out in front. And what we'll be left with here is three. To factor out a two from one of these, one of the 26's will change to 13. So we'll have 13 times 26 times root 26 minus five. This becomes a 13 because we factored out the two. Root 26, and this just becomes over here, plus one. Now we can just multiply this all together. And what we'll get inside our brackets here, three times 13 times 26, is 1014 times root 26 minus 5 times 13 is 65 times root 26 plus 1. Now we have 1014 times root 26 minus 65 times root 26. 1014 minus 65 is 949, so we'll end up with 24 pi over 5 times. 949 times root 26 plus 1. And that's it. That's our final answer. We could plug this into our calculator to get a decimal approximation, but it's more accurate to leave it in exact form like this. This is the surface area generated by revolving the parametric curve, this parametric curve here, around the y-axis and taking the surface area on the interval 0 to 5. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.